This is the Sales Bible Podcast, episode 294, The Mindset of a Sales Warrior, an interview with Jason Forrest. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non-sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, sales babblers. This is Pat Helmers. And today our guest is Jason Forrest. He's a sales trainer, consultant, and the author of the new book, The Mindset of the Sales Warrior. Now, Jason's pretty passionate about transforming sales organizations into high-performing teams, But what I found most interesting in Jason is that he has a view that's contrary to many. For him, he's a warrior and a protector, and he's here to stop people from harming themselves. In fact, he believes that you know what's best for them, and that unlike what some people say, he believes people like to be sold because they want to feel wanted. As I said, this is different from what we often hear on the podcast, so I'm pretty excited to have him visit. So... With no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Jason. Are you ready to babble? I'm ready. I'm ready to get going. Uh, Where are you calling from today? From downtown Fort Worth. I was actually in Fort Worth about three years ago for the Podcast Movement Conference, and it is a terrific, it's a terrific city. It is. Yeah, it's a great city and, and it's a great place to call home. You're the author of a new book. It's called, I got it right in my hand here. It's called The Mindset of a Sales Warrior. Um, In fact, this book looks so new. This is like the galley copy from the publisher. That's right. Yeah, the book's coming out uh, this month in in October. It'll be out uh, probably the middle of October uh, or the third week of October. So we're we're very excited. It's it's been my kind of opus, but it's been my life's work to to really ignite the pride, purpose, and respect professional selling. And and in order to do that, it starts with your belief system. It starts with your your identity and your your mindset. What's interesting about the book is that right off the get go, you say that you were warned to stay away from sales for, from a professor, um, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, yet you decided to pursue sales. How come? Yeah, well, in, in my family, sales was always a positive thing. It was always my my father was in sales my whole life, and and my uncles and and several of my aunts and cousins, and and so we were in a very pro sales family. My Sunday school teacher was Zig Ziglar of all people, which was really cool to hear him talk every Sunday. And, and really, yeah, yeah, it was it was. You knew Zig Ziglar personally? I did. Yeah, he was my Sunday school teacher growing up. So, um, so I, I've always been around a very pro sales environment. It's just that it was an interesting experience because, you know, I'm, I'm at school and, and this, you know, professor said that, that sales is no place for a TCU graduate. And, 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 you know, it just, it, it, it was kind of like a dagger to the heart at that moment because it really started kind of shaking my own identity and my belief system because I've always thought it was a very positive thing. And so because of that, you know, again, I, I, I really set off to, make my personal mission to ignite the the pride, purpose, and respect professional selling. But again, it starts with that mindset. So we've got to get our beliefs right in order to believe that. And we talk about that a lot in the book and and the different 42 strategies on how to to change your beliefs to therefore change your behaviors and change your results. But you know, Patrick, everyone is really in sales if they actually think about it. So this book is not just for a person who identifies that they are in sales. It's really for for any human being. If you're a stay-at-home mom and and you've you know, got a side business that you're trying to promote, whatever that is, you know, you're in sales. I mean, every everyone is in sales in some form or fashion. If you're a leader that's trying to convince your people to follow you to achieve some sort of quarterly objective or goal or mission, then you're in sales. Everyone is in sales. And so this book is 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 about how do we change our mindset so therefore we can change our behaviors and earn what we're truly worth. What I find interesting about this book is that it's built around the warrior archetype. And which I find interesting because two of my sons are in the army. Why does this archetype speak to you? Well, because if you think about it, a warrior is a protector, you know, and I love the fact that your, your sons are in the, in the military and, and I'm a very pro military person. We actually, in our, in our organization, FPG, we have uh, four different inspirations when it comes to our culture. So one inspiration is the military. Another inspiration is fraternity. Another inspiration is uh, sports teams. And then the fourth inspiration is church. And the thing they all have in common is that they're doing something that's bigger than themselves. So they're sacrificing themselves to 
honor something that's bigger than themselves, which is really where true motivation comes from. I mean, people are not motivated um, from a selfish perspective. They're really motivated from a selfless perspective. And so to be a warrior, a warrior is, I believe so much in my product and service and what I'm offering to the world that I want to protect my customers from making a decision to spend less and get less or uh, to do nothing, you know, so I, I want to convince them to, to do something that will improve their life, will get away from pain. Um, and I'm a warrior and my, my job is to protect their soul, protect them from, from making those decisions that could potentially harm them. And that's what a warrior is all about. This is different than a lot of people I have on the podcast, the helping archetype, the servant archetype, like servant-based leadership, you know, things like that. But it's interesting that you've picked the warrior. Yeah, so, so to me, the, the, I think the, the flaw with the idea of being a helper, and we've talked about that in the book as well, is that there are sales professionals that would kind of define themselves as they're more of a helper, they're a people person, you know, they want to help and serve. I, I think sometimes we, we, the presupposition behind being a helper is that, that I can only help people who want to be helped. And I believe that's very different than a warrior who is really more of a protector um, or right below a warrior is a leader. And, but the, the warrior is, is, is that you, you don't necessarily know that you need help. You know, it, it's like, let's use a, use a doctor for example, right? So, you know, a patient comes to a doctor and if a doctor defines himself as a help a helper, then the patient says, Hey, you know, I'm really sick right now and I need some, I need some help. And the, the helper doctor says, no problem. You know, here's some medication to solve your problem. But the, the doctor that's the protector is going to say, Hey, this is more than just a medication issue. This is a lifestyle issue. This is a total way of thinking issue. And yes, I will solve your current problem right now. But in addition to that, I have to protect you for the future life that you have and your kids' lives. And so because of that, I'm also going to talk to you about eating better and, and having a healthy lifestyle and working out and uh, different choices that you can make in order to protect you from what you're really needing, even though that's not what you're asking for. And so that's the difference between us is that we believe, I believe that that more helper concept um, can be um, can be confused or misinterpreted that I'm only going to help you if you ask for my help but a protector sees themselves as something more than that, that, that I know what's best for you and I'm going to protect you really almost from yourself. I don't see it like that, actually. Actually, I have the mindset of the helping. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> because the, I think the problem with sometimes what I see with the warrior mindset is that people get stuck in this idea that everybody, everybody needs what I got. In fact, I actually saw there, there, there's a quote you got in your book that, say, that says something. I was on page 65. It said, I believe everyone, everyone wants to be sold to. I think that's wrong. In, okay. fact, in fact, I've had a million people on the podcast say people like to buy, but they don't like to be sold. And that's a very old school way of thinking. When you hear that, what do you think? Yeah. So again, I, I think all of those things are really kind of hurting people. Um, that whole concept that, that, People don't want to be sold. They want to buy. What I believe is that customers don't have a problem with sales or salespeople in general. They have a problem with some salespeople that project boring, unhelpful, or unethical behaviors. But I actually do believe people want to be sold because they want to feel wanted. And, you know, for example, like uh, I remember I remember a buddy of mine, I was trying to convince him to join a local country club that I was a member of back in, you know, back five, six years ago. And it was interesting because we were going around, he was, you know, taking the tour and the 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 country club membership salesperson basically just gave him the tour and just said, Hey, if you're interested, let me know, you know, let me know, like, let me know. And we could start the application process. And we, and we left and he just said, Jason, he goes, I just kind of, feel, for this kind of money, I feel like they should convince me. Like, I kind of want to be sold on this. I kind of want to, to be convinced that I should spend my money in this area. And I don't feel like they want my business. I feel like they are entitled and they feel like they got a great product, and if they feel that if if, if I'm not going to buy it, then someone else will buy it, and and I want to be sold. And I, I think that's true. I mean, look at the you know the movie Pretty Woman. You know, people, you know, she she did not feel enough with herself, and so she was looking for a store to make her feel enough, make her feel that she was worth it, that she was worth the sales professionals' time and worth their business. And so, I mean, I get I get the 
general population concept because it's very soft and it's very fluffy and it's very easy to understand that people don't want to be sold they want to they want to buy but i actually think what they're doing is they're they're hurting they're hurting people by not explaining what they mean by that in the sense that that people don't want to be manipulated and i agree with that people don't want to be conned i agree with that people don't want to be convinced to do something that's going to harm them or to hurt them but i do believe that people want to be led and people want to feel wanted and they want to achieve resolution as long as it's going to improve their life and get away from pain and they want to be shown the way. And so, so that's, that's my, you know, kind of spin on that concept. And I think that if we take it too literally that people don't want to be sold, they just want to buy, then it's going to create a lot of passive minded salespeople that I'm here just to, you know, pre present my products or services. And if customers, you know, want to buy it, they'll buy it. That's it. Yeah, I don't see it like that. I see it more like of the, of the notion of, 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 let's go back to the physician, right? So tell me what your problem is, you know? What are you feeling, you know? What are you, what are you seeing? When does this happen? How often do you want this? And you kind of walk through their list of, uh, of pains and desires, right? Because people buy for both reasons, both pain and desire. And eventually you kind of get this list and you go, well, I think I might be able to help you, right? This, let me pull something on my bag. Do you see how it clicks off issue number one, see how it clicks off number issue two, and you get them to say yes, yes, yes. Picture the guy at the country club, right? You said you wanted to, you know, to have a tea time whenever you wanted, right? You said you wanted a great dining opportunity. You said you wanted this beer on draft, right? So do you see how we have this? This looks like a good fit, doesn't it, Jason? And Jason goes, sure. Well, great. Well, let's sign you up. Yeah. And so I would consider that to be sold. I mean, that that's, you're actually selling someone, you're convincing someone. I would consider it to be helping. Yeah. It, it's, just, it's just a, you know, it's just a, it's just, it's just all the, the thousands of hours that we've done working with salespeople on their own identity and their mindset and their belief is that people who are, again, performing at that level of, you know, that I am, again, I, I've seen salespeople that, that are acting as a warrior and, they would say, I'm here to help people. And I totally get it. I, I, I'm not against that word. I just, I want to be careful. I want to be careful at the presupposition that people kind of live by. And most of the people, not all, but most of the people who define themselves as I'm here to help people, if a customer is not asking for their help, they're not giving any help. And so that that's the shift that I want to make is that I want you to proactively help people, not passively help people. And to proactively help people you need to lead them. And that's the, that's the, that's the slight difference. Maybe you could go into your mastery pyramid that's in the book. I know this is a, this is an audio thing, but maybe you could describe it to, to the listeners. Yeah, yeah. So the mastery pyramid is, is basically at the motivation level. So if you look at this concept we have, we have called the results matrix and results matrix is our programming, um, which is what we've been told to be true our entire life uh, drives our beliefs, drives what we think to be true. It doesn't mean it's true. Just what we, think to be true, drives our emotions, which is how we feel. Are we, are we confident? Are we uncertain? Which drives our motivation, uh, which is do we operate out of a want to motivation or a have to motivation, which drives our behaviors, which drives our results? Well, the mastery pyramid is actually at the motivation level of our results matrix. And so at the very bottom of the, of the, of the mastery pyramid is this idea of playing to not lose. And so playing to not lose a salesperson who just, you know, every day signs up and says, Hey, I'm, I'm here to collect a paycheck. Um, I'm going to clock in, I'm going to clock out. They're a very kind of nine to five minded sales professional. Well, the problem with sales is that, is that it's the worst paying nine to five job on the planet because, you know, you're, because you, you're not working nine to five, but if you're making nine to five income, it's a horrible gig. Right. So, so one of the things we always teach sales professionals is that you all signed up to, for this job to make worth it money. To make the, the make, to make make the money that's worth the sacrifices of missing your your kids' soccer games and and you know time with your friends and family and so you know you got to decide what is that worth it number for you and it's going to have to come from a place of love and come from a place of passion and purpose and, and want to well so playing to not lose is just that nine to five well the next level up is playing to cruise and playing to cruise is very normal in any industry I go to there's always this kind of acceptable quota that a person has to make and as long as they make that acceptable quota then they're kind of off the, the the naughty list, so to speak, or even the nice list. And so like, for example, in mortgages, it's a million dollars a year and homes, it's two homes a month and cars, it's eight, it's, you know, it's eight a month. Um, I mean, each industry has like a specific kind of, you know, target that they need to focus on. Well, that's playing to cruise. The next level up is playing to compete. 
Now, playing to compete is actually still below the line. So playing to compete is I'm going to focus more on how can I, um, you know, my, my, my enemy is not the competitor. My enemy is the customer or my enemy is my own company. And so they're playing to compete in the sense of the only way they can succeed is to try to make their company look bad or their inner, inner, their inner uh, peers look bad or, but that's, they're always kind of playing the system or kind of gaming the system. The problem is, is what Jack Welch would say is these are people who are high revenue producers, but low integrity. And there's a lot of sales professionals that actually are stuck in this place is they've, they've kind of learned a way to kind of what I call legally cheat. And so we want to be careful that we don't stay in that place too long. And again, a lot of it's our society and our programming. And I remember, you know, when my first sales jobs, you know, I was at playing to compete just an, an act of vulnerability because, because I was crushing it. I was in the top 1%. And so, you know, I was getting all these awards and all this accolades and significance. And, and so I was worried that if I told people my secrets of how I became in the top 1%, then I wouldn't know what, then they would catch up to me and then I wouldn't be the shining star anymore. And so I was more worried about, about not helping other people instead being selfish and kind of helping myself. And so, so then I'll be very quickly, you get above, above the line, you play for improvement. So playing for the improvement is that you want to be coached. You want to learn, you want to grow, you have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. You believe that you can, you know, the, the more resources you add, the more positive change will happen. Like all that happens. And then the next level is playing for the challenge, which is every day you're kind of competing against your personal best. So it's all about you and how do I, how do you one up your personal best versus playing against someone else? And then the final level is playing for mastery, which, you know, very few people will ever kind of achieve this place of playing for mastery. This is the place of flow. This is the place of being in the zone. Um, the, the, the best way to know if you're playing for mastery is, is if you are so unshaken based upon any economy or any circumstance that you 100% believe in yourself your, your identity, you believe in your process, your presentation, um, that no matter what slump comes your way, you know how to get out of it. Like it's just, you're not, you're just unshaken. And when you're in that state, now you help other people. So now you serve as a mentor. And so the ones that I know are playing for mastery are the ones that are truly serving as a mentor for someone else because they figured out themselves. They got themselves figured out and now they can actually go serve others. A lot of people aren't that mindful and that kind of self-awareness is very powerful. That consciousness is very powerful. Yeah, that's you're absolutely right. I mean, that that um, it it takes a lot of presence for a person to to choose to be consciously competent. You know, it's interesting is a long for a long time, people would talk about how being unconsciously competent is actually the the key to success. I disagree with that. I actually think that the key to success is to be consciously competent. So you think of like, you know, you think of like a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning as a quarterback. You know, they're consciously aware of what's going on. They're very present of what's going on, which allows them to call, call audibles. But but most human beings, they might be consciously competent, but I also think that they're, sorry, they might be unconsciously competent, but I also think that allows them to be unconsciously incompetent so that they sometimes are lucky and they're successful unconsciously and sometimes they are um, not successful unconsciously. And so the, the goal really is to be completely aware and present at all moments so that you can choose the the right behavior, the right skill, the right attitude. You're aware. You can choose them from your your pile of resources you have inside of you. I, I think I, I think you're right. And I think it's it's a little both. I this harkens back to a conversation I just had this weekend on on Eric Herrickle's book, The Zen and the Art of Archery. That's how he saw it. That you're that that you're with the bow so many times that you pull the bow back, you're, you're focusing on the target and you're focusing at the same time on, on the, on the arrow and you do it so many times with so many reps, you don't even think about it. I think that's where Brady comes, right? He's thinking of the target and yeah, he's aware of like who's around him, right? Who's coming behind him. <laughs> but, and I hate picking Brady too, because I don't, yeah, but he's just present. I mean, that, that's Aaron, that's the Aaron Rodgers, right? So, so, you know, and and I and I and I think I think I think it's that melding of the two. I think what really brings to that. And and I actually I, I I agree I agree with your take on that. Yeah, I mean, just again, it's just about being present. It's about being look. I mean, but you know, Maslow's would call this self actualization. I mean, it's just yeah, you know, it's it's a it's a tough place to be. I think we all have moments of that place of being truly present with our customer you know, being uh, aware, slowing down so that we can speed up. I mean, the best example of that is just talk to your, your spouses, you know, the, the, 
you know, in any great relationship, I mean, how often does, you know, my spouse, Mary say to me, I don't feel like you're with me right now. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a message that she's saying, you're not present with me. You're not currently conscious. So meaning that I'm in my head, I'm thinking about something else. I'm not with her in the actual moment. And so, I mean, that's the whole goal. I mean, the goal of having a great relationship with her is to be present as often as I possibly can, because anytime I'm not present, she feels it. Well, that's the same thing with your success in life. It's a great metaphor, in my opinion, for your success of being a sales warrior is that every day you want to choose and say, hey, today I'm going to be as present as possible. I'm going to be conscious of the way I feel. I'm going to be conscious of, you know, am I playing for for mastery or am I, or am I playing to compete? You know, am I uh, proactively, we'll use your term, am I proactively helping this person, which I would call a warrior, or Am I passively helping them? Am I waiting for permission from them to help them? Or do I really see a problem that they have and I know that I can really serve them and I can I can help them. And so I'm going to proactively warrior up and I'm going to lead them to a place they wouldn't go on their own. And that's that's a conscious decision because if people are not conscious of that, then they're they're outdated hardwiring, their outdated programming, their their um, limiting limited beliefs will actually will actually sabotage them. Interesting. 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 <laughs> it's fun, fun topic. Right? I mean, it's a lot. Look, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because the, you know, to your point, I mean, you know, the whole idea of here is to get, get through the sales babble and that's what I'm trying to do. I mean, the, the, you know, for, I think for a long time, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of practices out there that I feel like are not being shared. And so, you know, the majority of every professional sports team has a in-house sports psychologist. And my, my presupposition here, underlying belief is that a salesperson is an athlete and they should be coached and developed and managed like an athlete. That's it, you know? And so, you know, so what I'm trying to do is bring this, this mental toughness to. Yeah, see, but I don't think that. I don't, I don't, I don't see it as there's a lot to be said from sport. And some of the great sales professionals I've hired have, have come from the sports industry, but I know tons of people who are terrific at sales who don't buy into this sports paradigm at all. Not at, not a whit. And they just have another way of doing it. And I get, and I'm okay that for some people that this might work, but um, I, I don't know if this works in all cases. Yeah. Again, and, and maybe athlete is the buzzword that doesn't 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 build rapport with you, but just look at it as a performance. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, it's it's a it's a performance art. So you know, again, you know, my wife Mary. I mean, she's she's a former ballerina. I mean, she would call herself a you know former dancer, and and it's a performance. You know, it's it's it requires a a a lot of attention and care to make sure that you are again that you're present every day that you're that you're working on your mental toughness. I mean, the, the thing I tell people all the time is that name, name any other job that you will have 20 working days in a month and a great salesperson could basically get maybe one or two sales. So they could have two wins out of 20, just two. And they're considered to be a top producer. So they failed 18 out of 20 days. Every day they wake up and they work for free. That's a lot. That's a lot of mental pressure. And so, Whatever you want to call it, you can call it. They, it's it's a metaphor of being a great violin player or a great dancer or a great athlete, whatever it is. But but you can be an accountant and you're going to win every day. You can be a customer experience person. You could potentially win every day. But in sales, you've got to find ways to win every day because you're not going to necessarily get the result that you're looking for every day. So you have to find what I call everyday wins. You have to work on your mindset in order to stay resilient. Right. This is the whole idea that if you focus on the process, not the results, and that your wins are, did I get my, did I get my calls in today? Did I send out my emails today? Did I do my follow-ups? Am I actually getting my eight to 12 follow-ups in on this one person? Or am I? Yeah. Did I learn from, something today? Did I, did I improve? Right, did I learn? Yeah. I didn't win that deal, but I learned a little bit about the competition. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That, those are all, those are all that, that, that concept that, that obviously it's so important. And so, I mean, that's why I wrote this book. I mean, I wrote this book from a, you know, you would call it a servant's heart perspective, or I would call it a warrior's heart in the sense that, you know, I'm trying to, I want to protect salespeople that, 
you know, this is to me the toughest of all the performance arts. It's the toughest because again, every day you, you wake up and you say, today I'm working for free. If you're in commission, right? Today I'm working for free. And I hope by the end of the day, I can provide more value than, 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 you know, what I'm doing out there. So therefore I can get paid for it. I mean, that's a, that's a tough gig. I mean, that's why research says that 80% of salespeople don't make it in the first year. I, I don't believe it's a behavioral thing. I think it's a belief thing. Okay. Is it that bad? The statistics? I, I haven't heard that. I got... 80% of new salespeople entering into their first sales career do not make it in the first year, 80%. But again, it's not because of behavior, because I believe most salespeople actually do know how to sell. Because I think I think selling is a is a life skill like breathing. And if you if it's any, for example, like any human being that ever says, you know what, I just don't think I, I just I'm telling you right now, my daughter, my daughter can't sell. And I would say, well, tell me about tell me about your daughter now. Well, she's just this and she's not she's just that's just not her thing. And I said, well, great. It, at what age did she convince you? Like when she was eight years old, did she have any problem convincing you to, to get candy or to stay up late or to sleep at a person's house, a friend's house when you did one or two? Like she have any problem doing that? And the answer, of course, is no. And I think so. All human beings are actually born to sell. I just think we are programmed through our parents or society, or in the case of a college professor that says selling is dirty or it's evil or it's something that's going to, you know, be less than. And so that's the idea about this book: is how do we, how do I write kind of a, a, a you know a, a love letter type book to to the sales warriors that are out there? People want to find you. I assume you're out there on the internet, right? I am. Yeah, you can go to fpg.com um, is, is definitely a place you can go. So fpg.com is our company our company site. Uh, we are the fastest growing sales training company in North America right now for the last four years on Inc. Magazine, which is pretty cool. And then my own personal site is just uh, jasonforest.ceo um, is where they can, they can reach me personally. And when we were chatting before we, we, we hopped on this interview, you said that you were, you were up for giving away listeners a copy of your book. Is that right? I am. Yeah. So at this point, we, don't, we want to get the book in as many hands as possible. And so I'm not sure how long we're going to do this. Uh, but for a limited time, anyone who goes to warriormindsetbook.com, so warriormindsetbook.com, then they can get the book for free. All we ask is that they pay shipping and handling. And so, um, so it's a place they can check out and again, get the book. And it's a cool book. And again, the, you know, the way I would I would talk about it is those of you who are you know, believe in Brene Brown or Carol Dweck's mindset book or Daniel Coyle's talent code book, um, you know, Bruce Lipton on biology of belief. I mean, there's all these kind of great minds out there, Wayne Dyer. If they were to write a book for salespeople specifically, this would be the book. And that's really what I've done is I've just, I spent my whole life studying minds like that and basically taking their their work and then applying it to help salespeople out, to give them to unleash them, to unleash them from, again, the rules and reluctances and stories and self-image that holds them back from earning what they're truly worth. And so that's what this book is about. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Jason, I re really appreciate you coming and visiting and babbling here a little bit here on Sale Babble. Thank that's you great. very much. Thank you. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. So there you have it. The warrior mindset when selling. I think a lot of what Jason and I are talking about is all the same thing, but we're just framing it from a different point of view. Do you agree with that statement? In any regards, if you want to get a copy of his book, you can find it in the show notes at www.salesbabble.com slash 294. Hey, I just read a great review the other day on CastBox. David Reed said, I wish I'd found this sooner. This is a no BS, dive right in, deeply engaging podcast that has quickly risen to my top three. Pat comes across as authentic, curious, and relatable. You know, human. He talks to you like a mentor and a friend, not at you like a shark with an agenda. I resisted at first because of the name, but don't confuse Babble with Ramble because he somehow manages to drill down to the essence of a subject in no time flat, which is aside from being refreshing respectful of my time. Thank you, David. Hey, I really appreciate it. If there's something you'd like to share about the Sales Babble podcast, please do. Whatever app you are on, whatever podcatcher you use, you could leave a five-star review. I would deeply appreciate it. That's all I've got for today, folks. Until next week, next Tuesday, take care and have a highly successful and a profitable selling day.
Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble Podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. This is a production of Abenero Media.